Drew Fio Mimes' TLC, new visual effects, upcoming abilities, and so much more was discussed in the latest Path of Titans devlog, so let's dive into it all. The Strufio Mimus TLC is likely one of the biggest things that was mentioned in this dev blog. We finally get to see what the next dinosaur will be getting a TLC, and that is Strufio Mimus. So, what do we know so far? So far, when we look at what's completed for it, the Strufio TLC is very much in its first pass phase when it comes to the textures. Additionally, Strufio's basic first pass for model updates was completed as well. They currently haven't completed rigging or animations or ability reworks for this dinosaur, so probably we won't see it until like the next couple months. So what else can we expect? It's likely we're going to see some new abilities with this dinosaur when it's ready, but according to the developers, Drufio Mimus will see a dramatic change in its proportions and head shape, as well as a proper beak and tongue as well. The definition of the feathers on its body are also going to be changed to give it more of a shaggy look too. The Strufio Mimus TLC is a still a bit away, but this is a good insight on what we can expect for this one in the future. Speaking of TLCs, it is time we look into the TLC for Lambiosaurus once more. The one currently on the public test branch which you can check out right now and I recommend you do to give it a full glimpse. The developers have said that this is pretty much that they recently updated or finished updating the kick attacks and also implemented the new vocal system for it. However, they also added that this is getting closer to be ready for release. So ultimately, we may see this one in the near future. And that's quite exciting. Maybe that Lambio TLC is not too far after all. Speaking more of dinosaurs in the game, or creatures in the game, this one isn't actually a dinosaur, Ramphorhynchus has gotten some new abilities. Now, these are the new abilities that Ramphorhynchus will be getting. It doesn't have them just yet, so he'll be getting them in the future. The first one is Lucky Feather. Lucky Feather is an upcoming passive ability that lets Ramphorhynchus survive an attack that otherwise would have killed it. This will result in a feather falling from your Ramphorhynchus, and you'll be able to flee before being attacked a second time. This kind of reminds me of the totem, I think, I don't know the proper name of it, the totem of undying, that's it, in Minecraft. When it pings up, gives you that extra health boost in a situation that otherwise would have killed you. It kind of reminds me of that. Then you have Fishing Lure, which is an ability which is an ability that will apply itself to all nearby fish in a 50 meter range. That causes a delay in their fleeing reaction for 3 seconds, allowing you time to catch things that otherwise might have been too fast for you. And these are some neat abilities. I do like this because it helps Ramphorin to spec further into that weird gameplay style that it has, a very unique gameplay style, which the developers even mentioned. And they did say they're looking at the feedback that you guys are providing for this creature, and that's why these abilities have came to the game. <laughs> Particle effects are coming to dinosaurs in the game, and this is something we are well aware of, mainly because they have the Berserker ability on Albertoceratops, and then Ceratosaurus has a similar one as well, where their eyes light up red and uh, smoke comes out of their nose. It's actually quite cool when those abilities apply. That being said, the developers did say this. The main reason for it is because it's aimed to help players have a clearer idea of what is happening in a fight and what abilities are ap being applied with indicators of sort. The example the developers did use was the Albert Ceratops ability Berserker, which boosts damage when low on health, and this is evident with glowing eyes, smoke coming out of the nose, and it's a perfect way to showcase that. However, they did also di indicate that other dinosaurs have VFX abilities, particle effects on their abilities, which we didn't actually know about. Like the Lambiosaurus, some of the new calls have particle effects that are visible as well, which is a good way to distinguish those abilities from other ones that will might otherwise look similar. What do you guys think about the particle effects? Are you happy with them overall, or do you think like they shouldn't be in the game altogether? I'd love to know what you think. The developers spoke again and shared more about upcoming foliage changes to the game. But they also mentioned why they are making these changes and why they're actually as important as they are. What's most important is how they look on both mobile and PC, that they don't majorly change or hamper performance, because at the moment on lower end graphics, foliage has a substantial change, some not visible and others looking very chunky on lower levels of detail. So for example, they'd lose too much detail overall and just 
completely look different. Regardless, the developers have showcased more foliage that they plan to bring to the game. Black tree ferns, king ferns, horsetails, and reeds. The overall plan here is to make sure the systems are optimized for both mobile, but also look visually pleasing on PC as well. With the developers going on to say this in the dev blog, when creating our foliage, we are paying special attention to the way we are creating our mobile versions of these assets. For example, removing the small details where tree branches split because on mobile these parts will be so small and hard to see anyways. We are certainly ensuring foliage looks as good as possible given the most restricted settings found on mobile platforms. However, we are still ensuring that console and PC players are still getting high quality and detailed assets for sure. Which is always good to know, especially when they're working to make sure graphical quality on mobile isn't completely switched out for performance on mobile as well because it's going to be quite tough to balance that. However, it's a good thing that they're trying to do. Now I recently spoke about 200 players server tests and it seems the developers have as well. Explaining that they are running optimizations on the game servers and that at one point when doing these tests they had over 200 players on a server, reaching reasonable tick rates and being perfectly playable. Truthfully for me, the most impressive thing is that the tick rates remain good when you look at the huge amount of players in the highly congested areas on the map, namely Impact Crater and Grand Plains. As often, when a lot of people are in one area, that can affect a tick rate of a server drastically due to increased load by people playing in that one area. However, it does highlight one thing. Despite so many people, 200 people on a server, the map itself was still fairly scarce in some of its population areas like in the likes of Dark Woods or if you go well over to Young Grove and areas like that. It's important to see that there's a lot of people in one area of the map, Impact Crater, Grand Plains and partly White Cliffs. It seems that's where everybody hangs out. And maybe we might see the developers look into that once server optimizations are made. That being said, the developers did say these were early tests. They have identified bugs that they need to fix first, but they have pointed this out. While we probably won't see 200 player servers yet, we'll likely see new server optimization passes coming before that, which is always great. <laughs> Now a quick piece to end on here, they are adding new UI animations to the game's menus which is on the public test branch right now. This will help a lot smoother in the animations and transitions for the game, more polished for players overall. If you don't like this or if it's affecting the performance of your device, you can disable it in your settings. So it's completely optional. That being said, that is everything from the dev blog this month. I find it's awesome to see that we're getting monthly dev blogs from Path of Times now. It's really cool to see. Let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comments down below. Which are you most excited for? I'd love to know. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.